y'all, Logan here. Today I'm going to show you how I cook my duck gumbo as part of my wild game cooking series. Alright, so for today what you're going to need is some andouille sausage, some creole seasoning, uh, either like Tony C's or Slap Your Mama, some gumbo filet, some celery, some flour, two green bell peppers, two jalapenos, or let's make that three jalapenos, a red bell pepper, an onion, yellow onion preferred, a clove of garlic, and salt and pepper, which I got in here. Some vegetable oil, and two things of chicken broth. What you're also gonna need is some duck meat and some shrimp. So here's the duck meat, I got it thawing out right here, and then here's the shrimp. I usually use about two pounds of shrimp and, I don't know, three pounds of duck meat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook it in this big pot. When I cook gumbo, I like to cook a lot of it. That way I can put some in the freezer and take it on trips when I'm going hunting. All right, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut up your veggies. I like to get them all lined up here. celery cut up here. What I like to do is I like to put all the veggies in a big uh, mixing bowl and that way when I get ready for them I can just pop them, pop them in the big pot. Don't worry about getting them too precisely cut up because they're going to cook down so you don't have to get them perfect. Alright, so that's what your veggies should look like when they're done. Kind of mix them up a little bit there. There you go. I always like to drink me a little bit of bourbon whiskey. While I'm cooking gumbo. So, now what you're going to do is you're just going to set this to the side. Because we're going to come back to that later. Alright, next now what we're going to do... We're going to cut the duck up into nice little bite-sized pieces. These are some woodies that we shot last year. They'll make some nice gumbo. Alright, so what you do is I like to cut them in thirds like that. And then just cut them into chunks about like that it's nice bite-sized chunks it also helps get the uh, BBs out if you happen to have any BBs in there you can kind of feel them whenever you're chunking the meat up like this but it looks like a little tool brush there tool brush just do two 
and you can actually leave the skin on like you see right here um, gives it a little bit more flavor some people don't like it but it doesn't bother me at all so another thing that I like to do with gumbo is I like to add little hearts I love eating the duck hearts to me it's one of the best parts of the duck but I'll add those and what I'll do is I'll just cut them in half like that that way nobody gets freaked out <laughs> they don't even know it's in there and uh, I typically get some inside tenderloins I'll usually just throw those in there by themselves but um, what I typically do is I'll save you know duck breasts that are shot up a little bit like that and I'll use those for gumbo and because uh, I'll be cutting them up anyways that way like I said earlier you can find the BBs if there's any BBs left in there and then you can save those nice looking breasts the ones that aren't all shot up for the grill Just make sure if you've got any feathers in there and the breast just get all that out while you're cutting I clean up mine pretty good before I package them up so Typically, I don't have many feathers or BBs, but I always warn everybody when they eat the gumbo uh, that it is wild duck, so there could be a BB. Usually there's not, but every once in a while, somebody finds one in there. So, it's just a good idea to warn somebody when they're eating wild uh, bird that you shot yourself, uh, that there might be some BBs in there, that way nobody breaks a tooth. Let's get this all finished up, and then we'll go on to the next step. That's the good stuff, folks. All right, folks, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut up the sausage. Like I said before, you're gonna use andouille sausage. I like the Sadell's uh, all-natural Cajun-style andouille. It's really good, uh, no preservatives or artificial flavors, so pretty good stuff but you're gonna cut up the sausage just like you did the duck nice bite-sized pizzas and then you're actually gonna throw the sausage in with the duck and I'll show you why we're gonna do that here in a minute So that's what you're gonna wind up with right there. Got your nice sausage and your duck. Give it a little mix. Now it's ready to go in the pot. You're gonna get five nice good sized cloves of garlic and you're just gonna crush them. Then we're gonna pull out the crushed pieces. Set those to the side for now. Now what you're going to do, you're going to go ahead and put that on high, and then you're going to add your oil. Now, what I do as far as the oil is I kind of just put just enough in there to kind of coat the bottom of the pan. So, uh, about three quarters of a cup with this size of a pot. So, you got your oil in there, and we're going to let that heat up here for a minute. Alright, that oil looks like it's heat it up nicely what you can do is you can take a little pinch of flour perfect and it'll fizz up there okay so now this is my little secret what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all that meat in here and we're gonna brown it then we're gonna take it out and put it back off to the side Just a quick brown. What I think this does is it kind of gives a gives that oil a little bit of flavor. What you're also gonna want to do throw your throw your garlic in there, your crushed garlic as well. Alright, once your meat is nice and brown. Just gonna take it, 
put it back in that container. Try to squeeze it. That's why I like to use the strainer uh, tongs like this. Try to get as much oil off as possible. So next thing we're gonna do now we got all the meat out is make the river. So I like to use a wooden spoon and I use the ladle right here for the flour and I can just scoop it and add it. I'm just gonna add a little bit as we go. Switch hands here. You gotta constantly stir. You don't want it to clump up kind of like it is now a little bit but if it does it'll be all right. Just add a little as you go. If it's starting to stick to the bottom like this is just a tad what you can do is just turn the heat down a little bit turn it down about medium and just go a little bit slower. Constantly scrape that bottom because what you don't want is it to build up on the bottom and burn your roux. Just keep an eye on that heat. If it's starting to stick real bad, just turn that heat down just a little bit until you find that perfect happy medium there. Like I said before, you're just going to have to constantly stir it at this point. Grab a little bit more flour. Just kind of basically like you're making gravy without your adding milk. Now this part of making gumbo is the most tedious and time consuming. So just make sure you take your time because you can always add a little bit more time when you're making your roux. But if you burn it, you have to start all over. You can't save it once you burn it. So just go slow, add the flour, play with your heat. If it starts getting too hot, turn it down and uh, just go slower. It's really the only way to do it. It's going to take some time regardless, so you might as well do it right. But you're going to want to keep adding uh, flour and stirring until you get it uh, to a mixture of about this thickness right here like a thick gravy and then once you got it like that you know you're gonna constantly stir constantly stir and you're gonna want to kick the heat up a little bit because what we're gonna try to do now is we're gonna brown our roux what we're looking for is a nice milky chocolate brown color and uh, it's very important during this stage to constantly stir because if you do not you'll burn your roof make sure you're not going to have any distractions uh, make sure nobody important is going to be calling you or anything like that because you step away from this and you'll have to start all over now you could stop here with a roux just looking like this and have a little bit of a lighter roux if you're a beginner and you've never made a gumbo or you're not used to making roux for gravy or sauces or stuff like that, then maybe I'd recommend starting off with a little bit of a lighter roux because uh, when you get past here, you can mess it up real easy and uh, I'd hate to want to do that and waste all this time because to make a good roux, it takes a little bit of time. So, but we will continue on. All right, folks, that's right about where I like it. It's uh, milky chocolate brown, and it's ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and throw those veggies in. And we'll go just mix it up like this. The veggies cool it down a little bit, but you gotta be careful. Still at this point not to burn it. So what I do is I get those veggies a nice coat, just like that, all coated in the room. And then, once it's all nice and coated, I'll go ahead and pop that chicken broth in there. 
Ooh, everything nice to do. So, two things of chicken broth. Ended up using about, I don't know, two and a half cups of flour to make the roux, just for FYI. But, put some two things of chicken broth in there. And then what I like to do is fill the chicken broth back up with a little bit of water, shake it up, and then pour just about a quarter of each of water in there. All right, now that we've added the chicken broth, we'll go ahead and give it a good stir. And uh, I know some of y'all are wondering, when is he gonna add the okra? Or if he is gonna add the okra? I am gonna add the okra. Um, but I like to do it a little bit after it's cooked just a bit. Otherwise that okra gets super mushy. And I don't quite like that. So we'll add the okra here in a minute. At this point, after it's been nice and uh, mixed back up, we'll go ahead and add the meat back in. Just give it a good stir like that. Keep it on <clears throat> about medium high. Put your top on right there. We're gonna let this sit until we get a nice rolling boil. Right, now, while we're waiting for that to boil, we'll go ahead and cut up our okra. I like to use fresh okra. A couple of these look like they might. Eh, they'll be all right. I like to use fresh okra. Some people use frozen okra, which is fine, but I like it fresh. And I'm going to use the same bowl that we used the vegetables for earlier and just cut them in nice bite-sized pieces just like before. We get a nice rolling boil we'll add that okra in all right we got a nice boil going so what we'll do is we'll give it a stir make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom looks good nice and thick we'll go ahead and add the okra some seasoning now you can kind of season it how you like I like to put a lot of Tony C's in there because I like uh, my gumbo to have a little bit of a spice so I season it with Tony C's and some pepper Nice thick gumbo here, as you can see. Might add just a little bit more water. It's pretty thick. So we'll add just a little bit more water. There we go. Looks better. And uh, I put about a quarter cup of Tony C's in uh, a batch this size so you can kind of do what you want do it to taste I mean put, put a little in and give it a taste if you don't like the flavor you can always add some more but I've made this enough times that I kind of I kind of know what I like so a quarter cup usually does it for me and then I'll add some black pepper as well and some gumbo filet but not until the very end so I'll go ahead and add a little pepper, a couple pinches. Then I'll let it cook for a little bit and I'll give it a taste test. And uh, 
If I feel like it needs a little bit more salt, I'll put a little bit more in. If it feel like it needs a little more Tony's, I'll put some of that in, just kind of to taste. I'm just making this for my wife and family, and uh, we like it kind of spicy, so I'm not too worried about it being too spicy. And now if I'm making this for a bunch of people, and uh, you know, I don't know if they're gonna like it spicy or not, I'll, I'll cut back a little bit on the Tony's, and uh, then you can always add it later, you know, to your in personal individual bowls. So, all right, so at this point what we'll do, We'll cut the heat down to a medium low. We'll put that top on, let her simmer for about an hour. All right, now while we're letting that simmer for you know, about an hour, what we'll do is we'll peel the shrimp and uh, get the shrimp ready to go in. What I like to do is wait till the very end. Uh, and crank that heat back up and then I'll cook the shrimp and that'll be the last thing I do and then I'll uh, serve up the gumbo right there because I personally hate overcooked shrimp so that's just me but to each their own so you can use fresh shrimp I, I just had this stuff in the freezer uh, so I use frozen shrimp thawed it out works just fine but uh, I like to use the extra jumbo and what I'll do after I've peeled them is I'll cut them in half into little bite-sized pieces. So let me get these peeled and then we'll cut them up. All right, here you go. Nice and peeled shrimp. So what I like to do just to make them nice and bite-sized, especially with this larger shrimp, is I like to cut them in half. So you got two nice little bite-sized pieces, nice spoonful sized pieces right there. So there you go. Nice bite-sized pieces of shrimp. We'll set this off to the side for now. All right. Now it's been simmering for just a little bit. We'll go ahead and stir it. You want to stir it every, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, just to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom and all that good stuff. Let's taste that and see how it goes. Mm. Well, the heat is right where I want it, but it needs a little bit more salt, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. Just add a couple pinches of pink sea salt. You can use any salt, of course. That's just the salt I prefer. So we'll give that a good mixing. back about 10 minutes give her another taste test all right we got going here give it a little stir not too much longer now we've got everything starting to cook down real good Just make sure that that bottom isn't burning while we stir. Also, what you're gonna want to do about this time is put your rice on to boil, which we got over here. Give that a little stir. Because uh, more than likely you're gonna want it served over rice. That's how I like to do it. So there you go. Not too much longer now. So we'll uh, crank it down just a little bit more. Probably give it another 20 minutes or so. Then we'll crank the heat back up and uh, cook the shrimp. And then she'll be ready to go. All right. Got a nice good rolling boil going. We'll go ahead and throw the shrimp in. There we go. And we got four or five minutes. Be ready. All right. Shrimp should be nice and cooked. Yeah, it looks like it's good. Last step is going to be to add the gumbo filet. 
so I just give it a few little uh, little pats there. Give it a stir. One last stir. Cut the heat. Then we'll let it cool off and then we'll plate it. Alright, now what we're gonna do is get some rice. Just put a little rice here in the bottom. I'm just gonna pour a little gumbo on the top. There you go, duck gumbo over rice.